All good? All right, the purpose today is to advise you of the murder of Angela Barrex. Angela died on Thursday the 22nd of October 2020 at Manham, where she lived on a houseboat. She was 53 years of age and had two daughters and a son who were adults and lived independently uh, from Angela. As I say, Angela had lived on a houseboat with her partner and her partner was also her carer um, on the River Murray at the parade at Manham, uh, sorry, at Blanchetown, where she'd been for about six years. Um, Angela suffered from obesity and serious health issues uh, and was mostly confined to the houseboat, but could go out on some occasions. And despite her illnesses, she wasn't expected to die anytime soon. At 5.45 that morning, her partner awoke to find Angela still in her recliner and she was unresponsive. Her partner rang an ambulance, the ambulance attended and in the interim, her partner administered CPR, but sadly, um, that was of no assistance. Police attended on the night um, and had contact um, with the local medical people and there wasn't a cause of death issued on the night by any local doctors and as a result it became a coronial investigation. In the following days there was what was called a pathology review. So a pathology review looks at all the underlying circumstances and the medical records and that determined that she had died from unknown causes and so the coronial process would continue. The death was initially treated as not suspicious based on the information available at the time but since then we've obtained information which has led us to the conclusion that Angela has been murdered. Her death's now been declared a major crime and major crime investigation branch have been undertaking an investigation for a short period of time and her family have been advised. We do know the cause of death, um, but we are unable to tell you that for operational reasons. And we do have a suspect, but we won't say anything in relation to who that might be. It's very important for the investigation for anybody who had had contact with Angela in the weeks and months leading up to her death for her to contact Crime Stoppers. We would like to talk to them. We would like to talk to them about the conversations they had with Angela um, and what was happening in her life at that time. And we'd also like information from anybody who may have information about who is responsible for Angela's death. I'm happy to take some questions. Do you know? Do you have a motive in mind? We believe we do, yes, but we can't tell you that for operational reasons. And is the suspect in custody or...? No, the suspect's not in custody and the suspect isn't connected with any other investigation. What's the new information that led you to believe her death wasn't non-suspicious after all? I can't tell you that for operational reasons because it might prejudice the investigation, mm -hmm. except to say that the information was quite precise and it led us to the conclusion that she was murdered. When did you receive that information? I can't tell you that without identifying the, where the information's come from. And is it just one suspect, or is there multiple people that you think could have been involved in? We definitely have one suspect, but we're exploring the possibility that at one or more other people may have been involved. And do you think that she suffered leading up to her death? Or? Uh, it's, I don't think so, um, but I can say that it's most likely the people responsible for this are people known to Angela. Um, she lives in a gated community, she lives on a houseboat, she's mostly immobile and, and lives her life on the houseboat and goes out occasionally. So it's more likely than not that it's somebody known to her. And just how shocking are these sorts of cases? You know, it was only a couple of years ago we had the Annie Maurice Smith um, case as well where something similar. Um, yeah, I can say we don't see the same parallels with the case of Annie Smith. Um, Angela had um, been on the, or was on the NDIS scheme. She had a paid full-time carer. She had a lot of equipment and things to help her to cope with life. So we don't see the same neglect that we saw in that case. In fact, there's no obvious neglect in this case.
Will you have major crime detectives manning the Crime Stopper hotline tonight like you sometimes do? Or? Yeah, whenever people ring in, um, that's an option. The Crime Stoppers call, um, call takers will often put somebody through to us if somebody specifically wants to talk to a detective, so we'll have people available. So if someone can make a call tonight and speak to a detective investigating? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And hey. is her, has her partner been ruled out as a suspect? Oh, we wouldn't ever say anything in relation to who a suspect may or may not be. We'll look at everybody involved. Um, the thing I would say is that it would be wrong to jump to conclusions as to who may or may not be responsible for think, at this stage. Do you think you're nearing a arrest in this case? Uh, the investigation's in its infancy, but we're very fortunate that, we, as I say, that we do have a suspect and we're exploring the possibility of more than one person being involved. So um, this is not a job where we don't have any leads. Um, this is a job where we have a clear focus. Does the suspect know they're a suspect? Beg your pardon? Is the suspect aware that they are a suspect? I think the person would be, yes. And can you just talk to, um, obviously Angela's family is here today, can you just talk to how much you know she was loved and appreciated? Uh, I won't talk on behalf of the family, but um, Kathleen will speak to you and we can do that now yeah. if it's convenient. Yeah. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> I am here today on behalf of my family, my name is Kathleen, to ask that anyone in the public who may be able to assist police in this investigation to come forward and contact Crime Stoppers with any information you may have. The family loved mum and we do miss her dearly and to think that someone was responsible for her death has taken the family by shock. Mum was a kind, loving and caring mother and grandparent who would do anything for her family. She lived a quiet life and interacted with her close family and friends um, very regularly. In 2020, our family lost a strong, happy and important piece of our family. We miss her every day and this latest development has shocked the family. To think that someone would deliberately hurt our mum is very hard to accept. Mum was looking forward to my wedding, which was two months after she died. To know that someone stopped my mum being there to see her daughter get married, um, a day which she would have been looking forward to. It really, we're really angry. Um, my anger is now at the person who did this. And I ask the person responsible that if you are listening, to please come forward. Take ownership of your actions, please. Um, how many grandkids um, did Angela have? Seven. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you, Kathleen? Thirty-five. All right. So obviously that's Angela. If we go to the next one. We... So that's the scene. So Adelaide's this way on the screen, um, and Angela's houseboat is the one there that's moored virtually under the bridge. As I say, it's a gated area. Um,